Hello everyone. We know that integers, terminating decimals, and non-terminating repeating decimals are called as rational numbers because we can write them as ratio of integers. So here we can easily identify integers because they are not decimals. That is here three minus five and nine. They are all integers. Also note that root of four can be written as two, and we can also write root sixteen as four. That is the square root values of four and sixteen are nothing but integers. So here root of four that is equal to two and root sixteen that is equal to four. They are also called as integers. Now if I talk about terminating decimals, I can see here one point five is terminating and it terminates at digit five. Similarly, we can see that the decimal number zero point three seven five terminates at five. So here 1.5 and 0.375, they are called as terminating decimals. Now, if I talk about non-terminating repeating decimals, we can see here the decimal number 0.1111 is non-terminating and also it is repeating at digit one. Similarly, we can see that the decimal number 0.66666 is also non-terminating and also it is repeating at digit six. So here the decimal number 0.1111 and 0.6666, they are called as non-terminating repeating decimals. So we have now distinguished between integers, terminating decimals, and non-terminating repeating decimals. And we can also see that there are some numbers which are unused. So note that we cannot find out the value of root three easily. In case of square root of four, we have easily found out the value because We know that two into two will give us the answer as four, but in case of root of three, we don't know what times itself will give us the answer as three. But yes, we can find out the value of root three by using calculator. And on calculating the value of root of three will be equal to one point seven three two zero five zero eight zero, and so on. And the value of root of five will be equal to. 2.236067977474 and so on similarly we can also find the value of root 6 as we can see here the decimal form of root of 3 where we can see after decimal they have all different values the value of root of 5 this is also non terminating and their digits also don't repeat and if i talk about the number 3.14159265353 which is nothing but the value of famous constant number pi so here also we can see that they have all different values so here we can conclude that the numbers root of 3 root 5 3.141592 root 6 and 2.64575131110 they are not integers and they are non terminating and also non repeating decimals This means that they are not rational numbers, and so they are called as irrational numbers. So note that irrational numbers cannot be written as the ratio of integers, and they are non-terminating and non-repeating decimals. And also note that square root number can be rational or irrational, as just now we have seen that root of four and root sixteen are integers. But root three, root five, root six—they are all irrational numbers. So by using calculator, we can now easily identify that whether square root number is irrational number or rational number. So let's say if I want to know that root of two is rational or irrational, so I will just take out calculator. So the value of root of two is equal to one point four one four two one three five six two three one, and so on. So here, root of two is an irrational number because the value of root of two is non-terminating and non-repeating. So this was one of the way of identifying whether a number is irrational number or rational number. But suppose we don't know what root two is, and also we don't have calculator. So now, how can we know that root two is whether a rational number or irrational number? So here, root two can be a rational number, or it can be an irrational number. So let's assume that root two is a rational number. So by definition, we know that rational number means a number that can be written as ratio of integers. So here I can write root two as the ratio a upon b, where a and b 
both are integers. And we also know that a ratio can have one or more than one common divisor. For example, 15 by 30 is also a rational number that is ratio of two integers but they share more than one common divisors. That is, you can check that 1, 3, 5 and 15. These are the common divisors of number 15 and 30. That means that 15 and 30 both can be divided by 1, 3, 5 and 15. Whereas if you can see that 13 and 7 don't have any common divisor except the number 1. So here we say that 1 is the only common divisor of 13 and 7. So by this now we know that a rational number can have 1 or more than 1 common divisors. So here also let's assume that the ratio a upon b has only number 1 as common divisor. So note that I have assumed that a and b have only number 1 as common divisor just to check whether our assumption is correct or not. That is whether root 2 is really a rational number. That is during the proof if I can find out one more common divisor then root 2 won't be a rational number. So let's say if I want to remove this square root sign then I will just take the squares on both the sides and I will get root 2 square is equal to a upon b the whole square which further implies that 2 is equal to a square upon b square. Now let's say if I want to move this b square on the left hand side then I will just multiply with b square on both the sides and I will get 2 into b square is equal to a square. So we know that b is an integer so b square is integer and there is multiplication of 2 in b square so this means that 2 into b square will be divisible by 2 and also since 2 into b square is equal to a square so we can say that a square is also divisible by 2 since a square is divisible by 2 a is also divisible by 2. So note that here b square is not divisible by 2 but yes if there is multiplication of 2 in b square then we can say that 2 into b square is divisible by 2 and so a is divisible by 2. So note that I have got a is divisible by 2 and this will be very useful in proving this. So let's take that whether I can get b also divisible by 2 since a is divisible by 2 means a should be some multiple of 2 that is a should be of the form 2 multiplied by some integer. So let's denote that unknown integer by the alphabet c and therefore I can write a is equal to 2 into c. So since we have to get b also divisible by 2 and we already have this equation that is 2 into b square is equal to a square. So let's put the value of a that is 2 into c in the equation 2 into b square is equal to a square and therefore we get 2 into b square is equal to a square so in place of a I will write 2 into c and since this is a square I will take the square of 2 into c. So when I open this bracket I will get 4 into c square. So just for simplification let's divide it by 2. So on simplifying here we get b square is equal to 2 into c square. So by the same logic that we have applied in the case of 2 into b square is equal to a square here also we can say that since c is some integer c square will be integer and there is multiplication of 2 in c square so we can say that 2 into c square is divisible by 2 and again since b square is equals to 2 into c square I can say that b square is divisible by 2 and therefore b is divisible by 2. So can you observe that earlier we have got a is divisible by 2 and just now we have proved that b is also divisible by 2. So now if I combine both these statements then I can say that a and b both divisible by 2 and this means that 2 is a common divisor of a and b. But do you remember initially when we assumed that root of 2 is rational number we have also assumed that a and b has only number 1 as common divisor. But just now we have got that 2 is a common divisor of a and b. So this statement that is 2 is a common divisor of a and b is a contradiction to our assumption that a and b have only number 1 as common divisor. And therefore we conclude that root 2 is not a rational number 
and hence now we say that root 2 is an irrational number. So now if you don't have calculator then this is the way to prove whether a given number is irrational number. And similarly you can prove that root 3, root 5, root 6, root 7 they are all irrational numbers. So let's learn some more facts about irrational number. That is whether we add or multiply a rational number to an irrational number, we will always get an irrational number as a result. Similarly, whenever we subtract a rational number from an irrational number, we will always get irrational number. And also if we divide irrational number by a rational number, the result will always be an irrational number only. So there might be various types of questions based on these relations. So let's say if I want to prove that square root of 3 plus 2 is an irrational number and that is we have to prove that addition of rational and irrational number is always irrational. So let's suppose that root of 3 plus 2 is a rational number and therefore we can write root of 3 plus 2 as the ratio of integers a and b. So let's say if I want to keep this root of 3 on the left hand side and if I want to move this 2 on the right hand side then I will just subtract 2 on both the sides and then I will get root of 3 plus 2 minus 2 is equal to a upon b minus 2 and therefore root 3 is equal to this will get cancelled now a upon b minus 2 so if I multiply and divide by b then I can write a upon b minus 2 as a minus 2 into b upon b now we know that a and b are both integers and therefore a minus 2b will also be integer and we already know that b is an integer so it means that root of 3 is nothing but the ratio of two integers that is a minus 2b upon b but we also know that root of 2 root of 3 root of 5 they are all irrational number means root of 3 is nothing but an irrational number and a minus 2b upon b is nothing but the ratio of two integers means a minus 2b upon b will be a rational number. So can you see we have got irrational number is equal to rational number which is obviously not true because irrational number can't be equal to a rational number. So this will be a contradiction to the assumption that root of 3 plus 2 is rational number and therefore here we conclude that root of 3 plus 2 is an irrational number. The complete course for grade 10th CBSE Math is available in pendrive and SD card format. Click on the link to buy now. To know more, you may also check the description box below.